What's something that people turn into their whole personality? Disliking something. Met someone the other day who hates avocados so damn much every conversation they'd have would come back to how different they were from most people cause they hated avocados. Or disliking everything being too cool for stuff. I have a friend of a friend who is like that. He's a nice guy but he loves to subtly imply that he's superior or has better taste because he doesn't like this or that. I wanna say memes but that just makes me sad about myself. Anime protagonists. My Texas high school had a British club. I'm actually a British citizen. So I tried to join. Those people were nuts. They made Doctor Who and Sherlock their whole personalities. I think the first hint of them not being British is that they created a club. My husband is British and although we live in an area with many other Brits, outside of UK, they all actively ignore each other. He assures me that they are all happier this way. I think that's called a taboo. Were there any other British people in the club? As a fellow Brit I'd be interested to know what goes on in this club. As an American I can confirm. When people say they love British culture, they mean DR, Who and Sherlock. They have TARDIS everythings, entire wardrobes from Hot Topic, and they also make drinking tea instead of coffee a part of their personality. I had an ex who said she was British, but all that meant was watching Doctor Who snobbishly, and getting all of her facts wrong. Drinking tea at high noon because she needed to because of her English blood. Not had an obsession or because of any cultural reason but because she needed to or she'd go into withdrawal. She at Triscuit crackers and called them biscuits because they were spelled similar and must have been the American version although I'm pretty sure your biscuits are cookies here, not crackers. Till there are weebs but for England. Don's moms. Sports parent. Blanket phrase. Parents living vicariously through their children. The generation they're born in. Only 90s kids will get this post. Proceeds to post something that existed before the 90s and continues to be readily available today. I can't even tell which generation I'm part of anymore. Myers-Briggs results. I would probably do this. But INTJs are too smart for such frivolities. Why is it that whenever I hear someone mention their Myers-Briggs results, they are always an INTJ? Herbalife. Having to literally explain to people that it's an MLM is so frustrating. They prey on small towns. Create nutrition shops that sell $9 shakes when it's literally just Herbalife and is helping the owner barely break even. Happened in my small town. Then out of nowhere three other branches popped up in the revolving small towns. Which basically means the owner con three more into joining so that they can get their profit. There's a documentary out there called like one in a million or something that breaks down the pyramid and how little people at the bottom are actually making. They also show that the shakes are nothing more than liquid laxative. So of course you're losing weight. Also, Kato had a co-worker get into Herbalife. She would take really crappy before pictures of herself slumped over with and washed and brushed hair. Ill-fitting clothes and shtie lighting with a plain wall background. Her after pics with her freshly styled clean hair, full makeup, push-up bra and skin tight clothes. Bright lighting with pretty backgrounds. You could tell by her particular dye job the photos were basically taken back to back. I called her out on that crap so quick. Half of the weightless commercials are like that. There was one where this woman lost so much through buying better clothes. Taking a picture in a better pose. And getting her makeup done. You want to show you lost weight. Show yourself in the exact same clothes so we can see they are looser now. Some fans are kinda scary. Their whole life becomes dedication to a celebrities. And it's not just their personality. They make everything around them about that person. Posters. Music. Merchandise. Weird things bought on the internet supposedly with relation to the subject of their obsession and so on. I can't imagine being close to somebody before and after their transition into that life. It seems like it'd be scary. I see a lot of people talking about pop. But this is also really prominent in Chinese media. Fans are literally crazy organized crazy where they would go out and attack anyone who dared to say anything negative about their idols. Guilt tripping other fans for not buying like 3 copies of the same album because it meant they didn't love him her enough. It's really unhealthy and cult like. Stocks trading investments. This isn't boiler room or wolf of wall street. You don't need to convince me to get into trading as we talk over a food service counter. I started trading on Robinhood here and there a few years ago just for fun. 
Eventually a few friends started to as well and for a few months I started to understand what it was like to be into sports. Like we had our favorites and could brag on wins over drinks. It was pretty fun. But then they started to get really involved and I'm still more casual. Now these conversations are starting to get tedious. Being sick sickly, I've always had very poor health. And in high school and early college, as my conditions worsened, I didn't like that I couldn't live a normal life. So I kind of leaned into it, always joked about how sickly I was while secretly hating myself for not being able to keep up with my peers. Some maturing and some guidance from my mother has helped me to learn that, yes, poor health sucks, and yes, I can't always do the things that healthy people can, but that doesn't have to control my identity. Doing far better now, learning what my true limits are and how to work with them. Astrology. The only full moon presiding over me is my own beret. Drinking. This is especially true when you google gift ideas for men. It's turned into a whole hobby. I got what is probably my 12th set of whiskey stones for Christmas last year. It's someone's nice way of saying I don't know what to get you but I think you're an alcoholic. Merry Christmas. I'm Norwegian. When I say that. A shocking amount of people assume that I'm American with Norwegian heritage. There are so many Americans making their Viking heritage their whole personality, butchering the Norse faith and fighting with actual Norwegians over the correct way to make a traditional dish and the spelling and usage of skull. Cheers. It's so effing horrible to watch. It's like being mocked. I know a lot of Irish people who would say very similar things, too. Redditors who act out their usernames. If you don't like me acting out my username, you can suck my dick. Thank you for your consent. Uh oh, Constantinople will be reclaimed. But first, we lunch. Their vehicle. I've noticed this particularly with Jeep Wrangler owners. Ugh it's classic car season right now in Metro Detroit. A lot of sweet cars cruising around. It never fails every year that Jeep owners descend on the cruises. They park, open hoods, rip around revving engines. It's a stock jeep off the lot my guy, you're not turning heads. In high school, this guy would do nothing but talk and brag about his Ford truck and would literally argue and fight with people who had a Chevy or any other brand than Ford. Their music taste, I am very much guilty of this. You like Led Zeppelin? Name every song, album, live version and also their bootlegs. Jimmy Page, easy, gets it wrong. Some fans on LZ forum, cracking knuckles chronological, alphabetical, or by length, I was like that as a teen, you don't listen to heavy metal, why not, I enjoy listening to heavy metal, therefore I am somehow cooler and better than you, now I liken it to going to a buffet and only eating chicken breast, you're not impressing any one dipsh, you're just missing out on a ton of other cool flavors and textures, laughs in rate your music, watching anime, I studied Japanese for 3 years in college and it's hilarious how the deeper into the classes you go, the less people talk about anime, like everyone watches it but it's an unspoken rule to never discuss it, I can confirm this is exactly the case, first semester was filled with weebs that would come in and put minimal effort into learning the language, probably expecting to know everything already, all gone by the end of the first year. Or those that think Japan is like in the anime they watch. I've known people go to Japan and expect to be treated like kings and have girls fawn over them because they aren't Japanese. The office. Stares into the invisible camera. Please don't jim the camera like that. Jim the camera? Disney. I went to someone's house once who was obsessed with Disney. I wasn't warned of how obsessed they were and literally had to stop in the middle of the room because I was gaping at the sheer volume of Disney stuff they had. Every inch of the walls and surfaces was covered in Disney paraphernalia. The sad weird thing was that these were extremely wealthy people so they had things like original Disney cells from the 3040s and actual valuable objects just crammed next to some tacky plastic plates. I have never seen as much salt produced so quickly as when Disney suspended things for annual pass holders during COVID. I have a few friends who go to Disney obsessively and they were effing pissed they couldn't go to Disney and that Disney dare make changes to the program in the midst of a pandemic. Whereas a couple of cast members employees I know were damn near bordering on suicide because of Disney playing layoff roulette with them. Or throwing people high risk on the front lines and basically saying if you die, you die and not giving them an opportunity to temporarily switch to something lower risk. I like going to Disney World. Usually go for a week every two or three years. 
and I've gotten really good at planning the trips to the point friends have asked my advice to help plan for them as it's cheaper than a travel agent. I know a ton of trivia and history for the Disney parks as I think it's such a unique piece of Americana. Naturally I used to think the people complaining about Disney files were hating on people like me, but then I became more and more aware of the dregs who take it too far. People who don't vacation anywhere not owned by Disney. People who recite the entire ghost host speech in the stretching room ruining it for everyone else. People who listen to non-stop Disney podcasts and watch non-stop vlogs. People who have unsolicited opinions on the lives of the Tracker family. People who get legitimately mad about any changes to the parks. People who collect all the limited time merch while being about the fact it exists. People who try to outskipper the skipper on Jungle Cruise. People who try to find the next big Disney parks meme or try and force an old one. No they don't fall down if you yell and is coming but please keep yelling it every 30 seconds while other families are just trying to get a picture. You are in a theme park. Everyone is just trying to have a nice vacation. Just take it down like three notches my dudes. OCD I don't know why many people in my lives believe they have OCD and they are proud about it. There is a difference between keeping everything organized and OCD. Thank you for the awards and all the replies. I was trying to reply to all comments but there were so many. I am sorry for people with real OCD I can understand how difficult that should be for you. Your thoughts and pain are valid. It is very difficult condition to live with. Please reach out to people who have real OCD and also get diagnosed. I hope everything turns okay for you guys. You made my day. My 23 why oh god daughter struggles WOCD but it manifests mentally not physically. She won't obsess over germs or if she locked her doors. But she used to spend hours absolutely debilitated as she huddled in a ball while she replayed memories. Many of them traumatic. Or various imaginary scenarios over and over and over and over in her mind. She has gotten so much better over the last 2-3 years and it isn't as debilitating as it used to be. But it was a real eye opener for me. As I had no idea OCD manifested in those ways. Just misconstrued mental illness in general. The amount of people who call themselves psychotic when they mean edgy is. Bleh. I used to be one of the kids that was just so random. Then I realized. I wasn't random and quirky. I just couldn't read the room and had a lousy social understanding. This 1 million percent. I remember seeing a documentary which had a woman with severe OCD. She was basically housebound. She couldn't leave the stove until she'd checked it X amount of times. And the lights and then things would have to be cleaned in a certain way. With a certain material or product and any contamination. Even the lightest of touches from an unclean source. Meant the whole process started again. For some people it's a horrible, debilitating issue. It's not making sure the label on your ketchup bottle is facing out. I have mild OCD and before I started taking medication for it my hands were constantly cracked and bleeding because I couldn't stop washing my hands. And as in your example more severe cases can be debilitating. I really hate it when people say they are OCD when they just mean they are fussy about things being neat or orderly. Cannabis. I'm a smoker. But god do I hate the it's just a plant bro. Dab life. And only smoke 22% THC guys. Nobody cares you smoke 3 ounces last week. Nobody cares about your 2 gram dabs. Inhaling anything besides air into your lungs harms them. It can fix every problem. Just shut up. Roll up and enjoy it like the rest of us. I was gonna say weed. But not for those particular reasons. I've known weed users who cannot engage in any sort of conversation without making it about weed. Wanna talk about music? Oh man. You should get high and listen to that record. You'll hear new things. Why don't I send you my playlist of songs to get baked to? Wanna have a chat about movies? See above response but swap records for movies and bet your ass they'll also mention the dark side of the moon wizard of Oz thing. Converse about politics. Oh man. Those politicians should all get in a room together and get super high. They'd solve all the world's problems. There's no topic they can't steer towards weed and it's effing tiresome. You ever seen the back of a $20 bill? On weed? Brands. People think choosing a brand of clothing speaks loter about them. It says to the world. My identity is so wrapped up in what I buy that I paid the company to advertise its products. Calvin Hobbs by Bill Watterson. Calvin and Hobbes have some very layered stuff in them. It is very, very good. I will never for the life of me understand why people get tattoos of brands like Monster Energy on themselves. And yet. 
being a badass in school, like giving teachers a day of hell just cause they're real and say what they think without filtering it. Eons ago a kid in my HS got jumped for making a very well loved teacher cry. Both her dogs died after being accidentally poisoned. Kid brought in onions the next day and made some joke about how everyone should know they aren't dog food. That's effed up. I had have a buddy we'll call Chris. Chris was a pretty laid back stoner type. Then he went to Washington where he met a bunch of hippies and became hippie Chris. Then he moved to Hawaii for a year and when he came back, he was Hawaiian Chris. Now he lives in South Dakota and he's Native American Chris. Completely reinvents himself every so often to the point of near contradicting his previous self. He's a good guy underneath, but seems a bit lost. Chris just understands that we are all actors in life and choose the roles we want to play. MF broke the fourth wall. In defense of Chris he probably views this as personal growth. Man. He thinks. I used to be a lazy stoner. But since I moved to Washington my eyes have been open to the life I was living and now I'm determined to become a better person. This narrative would continue with every shift in his life. And he'd look back on the younger man as being someone he's glad he's moved on from. He'll hit a time in his life where all of the lessons he's learned will make sense in the context of this journey and hopefully he'll be happy with the man he's become as a result. What a beautiful answer. I hope this is exactly how he views it. Chris we know it's you. Zodiacs. Well, it is creepy how they never caught that dude. I'm a uterus. Careful with the jokes guys. Mercury is in Gatorade right now. I'm a Capricorn. Liking the office. Literally half the Tinder profiles contain something about the office, both genders too, and half of dudes have. I like to lift heavy things and half of women have I like adventures and tacos, sample of what I see a lot, here for something real, don't waste my time, looking for the gym to my Pam, quickest way to my heart is tacos and mugs, love to laugh, favorite quality in a person is kindness. Need that perfect flirt to roast ratio. Must be able to handle my sarcasm. I'm fluent. Still not over season 8 of Game of Thrones. A lot of lols kvj kvj 39292 arix jwkner 8k2 nrj. Being in the army. Military. Also gym. I'd also add being a military spouse. On the topic of the military the US army ads on YouTube make it seem like it is all a video game to try and get people to enlist. I have to admit, the Marine Corps straight up brainwashed me to think I was better than everyone after boot. Living in Mick. Found Britta. Oh Britta's in this. Way to Britta living in Mick. Horses. I found out about horse girls not that long ago in WTF. Horse girls are the natural complement to car guys. MLMs. Thanks for your concern. Haha. <laughs> But I know, insert hustle, isn't a pyramid scheme because he specifically told me that it wasn't one. So I'm pretty sure I'm good lol. Paraphrased message a friend actually sent after my gentle inquiring into his recent activity. Spoiler alert, it was a pyramid scheme. It's not a pyramid scheme. It's a triangular business model. It's a reverse funnel system. M&Ms. On the other hand, very tasty. Hey queen, I know we haven't talked since high school. But recently I came across something that would allow you to work on your terms and be your own boss. You can also work from home. I thought this opportunity would be perfect for you. Let's connect and help each other out. Boss babe. Girl PLS. Accurate but needs about 67 more images. Fixed it for you. Hey lady. Random question for you. Hey queen. Today only. I thought this opportunity would be perfect for but right now. I'm what you. Girl PLS. You get so. Much. Free stuff. Disliking something mainstream popular common. What about disliking everything mainstream popular common? I have a friend who does this and it's really effing exhausting. Some things are really popular because they are just that good. If they can't appreciate anything mainstream it just makes me think they're just as close minded as the people they think they're making a jab at. Crossfit. It's a Kulkoff way of life. Just watched several crossfit docs and totally agree. Wine mom. 5 o'clock somewhere. Now let's drive the kids to soccer. Live laugh love. No fussin. No cussin. And no back talking. These are my reviews. Live. 6 stroke 10 love. 3 stroke 10 laugh. 8 stroke 10. That reminds me of this SNL sketch about those wine mom signs lol. Their boyfriends girlfriends. JT. Has my. 
especially when their partner is also a single issue identity person, army wives is one, or a girl that dates a guy in a band sometimes, or that guy whose girlfriend plays games, but that's like all she does. One hilarious instance is this girl whose boyfriend was in our equivalent of the reserves. She's convinced he is this bad A who fought in Iraq and Afghanistan and all over the world. Guy was like 8-10 years old when Iraq happened, and younger again when Afghanistan happened. Not only that, but we're a neutral country, we don't have soldiers all over in hot spots. They have been engaged for like 6-8 years but he doesn't make as much money as a mall security guard as he pretends he does as a military contractor so he spends all his money appearing to have money then saving for their future. He also has to keep her at arm's length because he isn't very smart and his lies aren't very good, so he's kind of stringing her along in limbo. Meanwhile she is rubbing how bad a he is in everyone's face. I actually told him to tell her, and tried to tell her, because I thought it was all unusually cruel. As you can imagine it didn't go well, tried to do the right thing, coach for it. Now I get to laugh guilt free as they both f their lives up. She's like 30 now, and never had a job. Because she is sure he's gonna pay her way. Long engagement with JT. It took a while to put together the dream princess wedding she's had her heart set on since she was 6. Saving $150k for a single event is a slow process. Cryptocurrency. I hate this so much because my best friend got into crypto and now is the only thing he talks about. Same. My brother turned my daughter's 11th birthday party into a family crypt commercial. Going so far as to get my mother to invest 2k, right before the huge dip, it's all he talked about up until the market dropped. Now he's much quieter, I'm into crypto and I tell almost no one because I don't want people to think I'm nuts. Owning a Tesla. Influencer, I mean actual influencers whole jobs are their lifestyles, they get paid to make their whole personality their personal brand. Political party. Vaping. Literally everything. From sex to Doctor Who and all that stands in between. Which is everything. How dare you imply that Doctor Who and sex are on opposite ends of the spectrum. Work. Some people just make it their whole life and I don't get it. Work to live. Don't live to work. My workplace is normal business hours are 8.35 o'clock. But I'm constantly hearing people say sh like when I was working on it this weekend or talk about how they work so late. It makes me cringe.